Hey guys, this week we're talking about watercolor painting. Watercolors are a special type of paint that usually start out as a dry color and we add water to it to make it fluid so we can move it around on our paper and also add water to it to make the color lighter. Sometimes it comes in a little tube like this. Other times it comes in a dry palette of different colors. And nowadays they even make special watercolor pencils that you color with first and then you add water on top of where you colored to turn it into paint. First, we're gonna go over three techniques that you need to know to master watercolor painting. Blooming, pulling, and layering. Before you start painting, I would always recommend you draw out your picture first with a pencil. I'm going to show the techniques without a drawing, but when I draw my real picture, then I'll be ready to start painting. The first technique we're going to talk about is called blooming. Blooming is a wet on wet technique where we get our brush totally wet with color and add lots of watercolor to our paper. Then we're going to clean off our brush keep a little glass of clean water. Load up our brush with our other color and add that color to our paper. Where the colors touch, they'll start to bloom or blend together, sometimes resulting in another color, but always getting a really soft mix where our colors are touching. Our second technique is called pulling. Pulling is all about loading up your brush with a one color, adding it to your paper, and then we're going to clean off our brush again. And we're going to load up the brush with some clean water and pull it through the color that we already used. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull the paint and spread it out. And it also makes the color lighter from where we added the extra water. The third technique is called layering. Layering is all about adding more color on top of your dry paint. As you can see here, I already added a lot of color to my paper, but it's still very light. If I want this part to be a darker blue, or this yellow to be darker, or even for the green where they blended together to become darker, I'm gonna to have to add more paint. But first I gotta make sure it's dry. Okay, now that my paint's dry, I can add another layer of color on top of the ones I've already done to make my colors darker. But once my paper is all wet again, I'm gonna to have to dry it off before I can add any more layers of color. Now that it's dry, I can see on my paper where my layers got darker and where I might have missed some spots. So if I want to go back and add another layer of paint, I made sure it's dry. Now I can add more to get the color that I needed. To do this project, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you're going to need a paintbrush, at least one. If you don't have any paintbrushes at home, something you can use instead is a Q-tip. Q-tips are great because they soak up lots of paint, so you don't have to keep going back and dipping in your cup, but we can also cut them smaller to make smaller details if the other side is too big. The other thing you're gonna need is some paper. Plain old copy paper will work, but because it's thin, it's gonna soak up the water really fast, and if you put too much water in it, it might fall apart like a piece of tissue paper. So you want to try and use something like construction paper. This is a piece of cardstock, and to help it not fall apart and not get all wrinkly when we add water, I like to tape my paper down on a piece of cardboard to help keep it flat. The last thing you're going to need for this project is the paint itself. If you have the kind of paints that come in a tray, you can use your brush to add water to the paints in the tray, or if you have another kind, you can mix them up in a glass. One of the things you might be wondering is, how am I supposed to do this project if I don't have watercolor paints at home? 
I have a few easy ways that you can make some watercolor paints for yourself at home, but make sure you get your parents' permission first because some of them can get messy. For each of these do-it-yourself methods, you're going to need a glass with two tablespoons of water. It's not very much, but remember water spreads out a lot when we brush it on our paper. Option number one is food coloring. Five to ten drops of food coloring and you get the color you need for your paint. Option number two is to use some leftover coffee or tea. You still only need about two teaspoons worth, but it gives you some really nice browns and reddish brown colors called sepia tones. Option number three is some Kool-Aid mix or some drink mix that has colors already mixed in. This works best for the darker colors like red and blue, but you can use any of them. Mix them with your two teaspoons of water and you get the color you need. Option number four is using some old markers and soaking them in water. I had to let this one sit for a whole day for it to get all the color into the water. So if you're trying to do this quickly, this might not be your best option, but it still works. When you're deciding how you're going to do your project, the first choice you have to make is whether you're going to paint inside or outside. I don't necessarily mean whether you go outside to paint or stay inside to paint, but are you going to paint a picture of the inside of your house, the inside of the room where you're at, or are you going to pick one object inside your house? Or are you going to go outside and paint one object that you find outside? Or are you going to paint what it looks like outside during the spring? So check the prompt that I'm sending out with the video and look at your four choices. And when you're done with your painting, take a picture of it and send it to me, Mr. Hartel, at vhartel at kcsma.net. And I'll write back to you then. Have a great week.